please welcome to the stage the world-renowned quantum physicist, Dr. John Hagelin. Welcome. I'm staying here to interview you. So don't be afraid by the slightly altered dynamic. Think of this as like Regis and Kathy, <laughs> but about quantum physics. <clears throat> so I've got some specific questions that I've been given. Right. Doctor, what does science tell us about meditation? A lot. Meditation... <laughs> I'm genuinely interested. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that would have been sure. I'd have, oh, fair enough, he is a quantum physicist. Meditation, properly understood, is a technique to turn the outwardly directed attention within, to experience deeper, quieter levels of thought, to go beyond the thinking process, to experience pure subjectivity, pure consciousness, the source of thought. Science says this meditative state is a fourth state of consciousness, distinct from waking, dreaming, sleeping. It's a state of very deep rest, deeper than sleep, and simultaneously a unique state of electrophysiological brain functioning. That means orderliness of brain functioning, maximum EEG coherence. And that's important because EEG coherence correlates with rising IQ, intelligence, creativity, learning ability, good looks, psychological <laughs> stability, emotional maturity. Everything good about the mind depends on its orderly function. How are those uh, neurological factors that you've just described palpable and tangible? How can you prove that? Simple tests for IQ that kids all take, that adults avoid. You can show that uh, you know, at university kids, for example, intelligence continues to rise. It rises in adults in elderly homes. And at that point, intelligence is not supposed to be increasing. After the age of, well, about your age, intelligence begins to shrink dangerously. 20. <laughs> it's a cruel world. So the fact that anybody can start a process that increases orderly brain functioning, raises intelligence, creativity, learning ability, academic performance, moral reasoning, is an amazing tool for education. I'm very excited about this as an educator. I've noticed my moral reasoning has gone through the bloody roof since I started meditating. I'm so morally reasonable, sometimes I don't leave the house. What does the transcendental element of transcendental meditation mean, please, Doctor? The transcendental is important because it's not about thinking or concentrating or contemplating or visualizing or any kind of intention, any kind of effort. It's about slipping beyond thought to the experience of the source of thought, which is being, pure subjectivity, pure wakefulness. So in that, when that happens, the awareness, which is normally sharply localized, and the harder we concentrate, the more sharply, narrowly focused the awareness is, starts to relax and expand and relax and expand, and then boom, unbounded. Then you get a burst of EEG coherence, and then when that becomes stabilized, orderliness of brain function becomes color fast, permanent. So just in simplistic, laymanistic terms, that initial focus on the mantra gives you access to a broader consciousness. It's not the focus on the mantra, it's the fading of the mantra, which is part of the process. It's, a, it's, a, it's an ancient trick. It happens automatically. It's gone. And when it's gone, you are no longer localized. You are unbounded. It's that unbounded awareness subjectively that gives the global EEG coherence, orderliness of brain functioning. So it's not really about concentrating on a mantra. It's about transcending the mantra. I understand. Is there a religious or a doctrinaire component to this system? It's not a religion. It's not a philosophy. It's a technique, pure and simple, to experience the source of thought, pure consciousness. Now, people of different faiths may say to them it has deep religious significance. It resonates with their own beliefs. Most, many religious faiths, spiritual traditions, believe in the fundamental unity of life which is now a scientific fact, the fundamental unity at the basis of the diversity of the universe. That's what the unified field is, but you knew that. Transcendental meditation is I did actually, because I looked at that unity. tree drawing. That's it, that's it. Like there is unified, all being is... At the source there is of all diversity. All yeah, all the basis of diversity. So that diversity on this level, molecular, less, atomic, less, nuclear, less, subnuclear, and then one. The force is all unified. That's the unified field, the fulfillment of Einstein's dream. The superstring revolution, which hit the UK, I understood. It hit here, and yeah, since then... nuts for superstring <laughs> over there. It's like Beatlemania all over again. 
you could say that the long-term result of meditation is living the scientific truth of the unity of life, experiencing it momentarily and then stabilizing it and living the unity of humanity as a living reality in daily life. And that's what David Lynch was talking about, enlightenment, higher states of consciousness. This question, Doctor, it seems a bit aggressive, but I assure you it was given to me by Bobby Roth, who is a good man. <laughs> uh, this is not, like, I'm not improvising these, that's why I've got this thing. You are a quantum physicist. That be, it begins with a statement. That's irrefutable. We've already established that. What are you doing talking <laughs> about meditation? Seems aggressive, but that's the question. Since Einstein, <laughs> physics has been about discovering the fundamental unity at the basis of the surface diversity of the universe. You dig beneath the molecular, atomic, nuclear, and these big particle accelerators to discover the unity deep at the core of physical reality. Meditation is a subjective means of experiencing that same fundamental unity of life. And that fundamental experience transforms the brain. It transforms the physiology as well. But really, it's the same unity from the perspective of modern physics that is experienced subjectively in the meditative state, state of pure consciousness. I really like that. I really like it when things in the world of physics seem to be replicated in the spiritual world, that there is a, a presumed oneness between us all as spiritual beings, and this appears to be mirrored by the physical world, that we are all one, that That's separation it. is an illusion, that conflict is unnecessary. It's like we're having to go at ourselves, like sort of a war between nations, like chewing your own foot off. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Don't try and mug me off, mate. I do this for no. a living. <laughs> I don't come round your house and try and split atoms. <laughs> right, so I think now we've got, a, there's a scientific element to our understanding. I think that, is there anything else that you think we should add? Or has this been perhaps the best uh, interview you've ever encountered? One thing, and that is, I'm an educator. I'm really excited about the application of this for kids. Because school, you spend so many years there, and you wonder what it's for, but it's really ultimately for the full development of mind, body, and behavior. The addition of 20 minutes experiencing the unbounded self, developing the brain, actually developing intelligence, creativity, harnessing the full potential of the brain, that's what education should do. You add this to education, the transformation in the schools is unbelievable. So last year we launched a Radio City Music Hall, a tech program to teach a million at-risk kids. We've done 120,000. Since then, 350 schools have incorporated this into the curriculum here and all over the world. It's going to be soon a very different world. And this is the wave of the future. The goal of our foundation is to get there sooner rather than later. And with the help of everybody here, we will really achieve meditation, full potential, all over the world. And that's what we're about. And thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. John Hagen.